Hello everyone and welcome back to another orchestration video. I know it's been a while since we last delved into orchestration techniques and know-how, but I figured it's time to resume the series. We've had a nice hiatus. Hopefully we've all gotten comfortable using the strings and the time since that series is finished. So I figured it's time, let's get back into it and let's keep exploring the orchestra and how to write for it. Now our last installment was all about exploring the string family, writing for orchestra, and how these separate instruments interacted by themselves and with each other. So this time around, we are going to be taking a look at the intricacies of the woodwinds. This includes how they are categorized, how they're used, how they're orchestrated for, and a whole bunch of other topics similar to how we explored the various string libraries. And we're gonna be starting off with more of a basic introduction on how they are categorized individually. Now, how do you define if something is a woodwind? Well, in this case, it was just as the name implies. These were instruments made out of wood that utilize wind to create tones. I say they were made out of wood as woodwinds are now commonly made out of steel, or some of the cheaper ones might be made out of plastic, and there are a few variations made out of brass. Unlike strings, which have a very unified design across all ranges and instrument types, woodwinds do not have a unified design. Instead, the woodwind choir is comprised of many instruments with unique shapes, designs, and timbre. In fact, the only few characteristics that make all woodwinds considered woodwinds are that they have a long tube into which the player will blow, and that the tones are produced using various holes cut into the length of this tube. The second characteristic is actually an extremely important one because it's actually the difference between categorizing the saxophone as a brass instrument or a wind instrument. Despite common belief, the saxophone is actually a wind instrument. Most woodwinds will also have mechanical additions now as well, unlike in ye old days of ancient times. This new mechanical system is called a bowing system. This actually allows the instrument to be more flexible and easier to play, and is an important thing to keep in mind when writing for your instruments and learning these instruments as we continue with this series. Since the wind family does not necessarily fit one design like strings, they are actually subcategorized using a lot of various different methods. It's very important to understand these categories if you want to fully understand the instrument and write for your various winds. Now, the first way to categorize is by far the most common method, and this is by family. And for the purpose of future videos, this will be the categorization method I will be using. There are four families of woodwinds, being the flute family, the oboe family, the clarinet family, and yes, of course, the saxophone family, each of which have similar tones, physical characteristics, and design shapes. The second method of categorization is the method of which the instruments produce tone. This normally focuses on how many reeds the instrument have. A reed is basically a flexible piece of material that vibrates when the player blows on it and it produces tone. In this subcategory, there are winds with no reeds, single reed instruments, and double reed instruments, all of which have very unique tones, timbre, and methods of playing. The third method is the shape of the pipe the instrument is made of. There are only really two kinds in the wind family. There are cylindrical tubes, such as flutes and clarinets, and conical tubes such as oboes, English horns, bassoons, and saxophones. As you can see, these are both very clearly designed by the shapes of the tube and the shapes of the opening on the end as well. And the fourth category covers the overblowing of the instrument, and more specifically, what notes the instrument overblows. Overblowing is basically the woodwind equivalent of making overtones. It's the woodwind's method for producing those overtone notes and adding in those extra harmonics. All of your conical tuned winds will overflow your octave or create that octave overtone. Your flutes will do this as well, while the clarinets will actually overblow the 12th. And finally, the fifth and last category covers if the instrument transpose or not, and by how much as well. Now, if you've been following along with my previous orchestration videos, you might be asking, what is transposition? This hasn't really been mentioned before. It's kind of a new topic. Basically, transposition means the instrument produces a different note than what is written on the sheet. Cases like this, there are actually two different pitches you need to be aware of, which are the written pitch as it appears on your sheet music and the concert pitch, which is what you hear when it is actually played. These two pitches will actually vary depending on what instrument is used, so it's important to learn the different transpositions as you go on. I will of course be covering those as we break down each of the individual instruments in future videos. In this specific category, there are two categories and one of them actually has two subcategories. The first category is of course non-transposing instruments, 
And then the second category is, of course, transposing instruments. And in transposing instruments, there are two subcategories of those instruments that have fixed transpositions, which don't change, and those with variable transpositions, which can and will change. Now, of course, this is a bit of a complicated topic, so I can just hear someone saying in the background, why is transposition a thing? This simply feels like it's making things more complicated than they need to be. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you. If you work with digital libraries and you are a VST library composer, you work in the digital realm and you have no plans of going and working with live orchestra or furthering uh, your trade in that specific area, transposition will probably never be a thing for you. Or if it is a thing, it will be very minimal and you won't have to worry about it to as large of an extent. But if you work with sheet music, scoring, and live players, transposition is very necessary to the quality of the production as well as the ease of use of creating it with the live players and recording it with the orchestra. Before the invention and widespread implementation of the BOEM system, these instruments were designed specifically for a specific range and purpose. The Boeing system not only made instruments able to cover wider ranges more flexibly, but they also made them a little easier to play. Before this, musicians would actually have to switch between instruments during performances to fit these different ranges. And transposition was a way to make it physically easier to write for these ranges as well as play them and just for instrument changes. Now this is a fairly complicated topic when you first hear about it, but trust me, it gets a lot easier when you actually go in and start using it and implementing transposition in your own music and your own works. Now that we've figured out how to categorize these woodwinds and understand how they belong in these different categories, it's also important to know that there are a few unique characteristics to the wind family. They really are not nearly as homogenous as the strings will be. So the available articulations, such as your trills, will vary for each instrument. Woodwinds also lose a lot of power in certain ranges. Flutes are very weak in their low range, oboe is weak in the high register, and different characteristics such as that. Although one very important thing to recognize is vibrato on woodwinds. Vibrato on woodwinds actually has four different uh, methods of being produced, and all of them are equally as powerful and emotional and rich as on the strings. I absolutely love the sound of vibrato on woodwinds actually. So it's important to keep that little tidbit of information in the back of your head when you're writing for woodwinds. It is not weak when you play with the vibratos. It's actually very rich and beautiful sounding. There are also a large variety of specialty articulations that only woodwinds can do, such as double tonguing, triple tonguing, key clicks, slap tonguing, other things like that that involve the way that the instrument is played that simply can't be replicated by other members of the orchestra. And we will be exploring these in detail in future episodes. But for now, please let me know if you found this video informative. Leaving a comment down below actually goes a very long way to helping me improve my future videos. And I'm really looking forward to really break down the woodwinds as we continue to explore them and do them justice. Anyways, guys, stay tuned for the next Woodwinds video, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.